Welcome to our short webinar on low-level lasers with the photon diode laser. Uh, I found this has been a tremendous boon to my practice. I've been doing low-level lasers since 1993, and I think it's one of the best things that happened. For the first time ever, you can actually now take your surgical lasers and use it as a low-level laser as well. Now what we're going to do is show you some of the applications for it in your dental practice. Light is a very powerful thing that we can use. Uh, in the spring, the light comes down, plants come along, you get the leaves growing. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to do that. Well, that light energy is the same light energy that we're going to use to apply so many different things in dentistry that are going to help our patients. So low-level laser therapy that we're talking about, it uses light energy in the form of photons to elicit a, a set of response and a biological response to the body. This contrasts with surgical lasers that give either a photothermal or a photoacoustic response. So it's a biologic response that's happening with these. So light's absorbed in the mitochondria of the cell. It stimulates cellular energy and produces ATP. And what you get is restoration of, of the cell morphology and function, and it stimulates a number of secondary effects. So basically, to think of this, Mitochondria, like a car, that's the engine of the car. That's what produces all the energy. ATP that's produced in those mitochondria, that's the gasoline. So that's what's driving our body. Is the, light, the light is producing more ATP, which is making functions work for our body. So with that, we get a number of secondary um, effects. We've got increased lymphatic flow, which leads to reduction in swelling and faster healing. Uh, stimulates beta endorphins, the body's own painkillers. Uh, affects the depolarization of C fibers, so that's less pain pain carried from the teeth. They're non-mitated fibers. That's the fibers that come from the dental. Uh, it stimulates fibroblasts for wound healing. That's what creates the soft tissue. Uh, we get formation of capillaries in the blood vessels for wound healing. Uh, it stimulates osteoblasts for building bone and odontoblasts for secondary dentin. It also uh, decreases the inflammatory response, so with that you get less pain and inflammation. So when we're talking lasers, what we've got is an optical window. And if you look at this, this is basically from about 600 up to uh, about 910. And that's the water absorption. In that area you get less water absorption. So if the water was absorbing the laser light, there'd be less cellular effects. So this is why we picked the 810 wavelength, because there's very little water absorption at that wavelength. So the history of lasers, they were started in the 1960s. Andre Nestor had a low-level laser, noticing good pain control and wound healing, and wanted to know did it cause cancer. So what he did is he took some mice, created wounds, shaved them, created wounds on the left, you see the control wound on the right is the wound that's had the laser applied to it. So what you've had is faster wound healing. It also stimulated hair growth in the mouse. Uh, this is the most important slide to understand. Is It's called the Arndt Schultz uh, rule. And what you've got is if you start off at a very low dose, there's no effect at all. As you start to increase the dose, you know, one, two, four joules, get biostimulation. As it goes even higher, you get bioinhibition. So stimulation, you want things like healing. You want to stimulate the fibroblasts for soft tissue healing. If you've done implants, you want bone, more bone to grow in. Bioinhibition, that's pain control, reduction of inflammation. So if you understand whether you want, you know what doses should be used. Uh, an example is if you've done, say, implants. Time of implant, you want to apply the laser for eight joules give you inhibition, patient doesn't want pain afterwards. Then I bring the patient back twice a week for two weeks to stimulate the uh, bone to get faster integration and better quality bone. So what are some of the dental applications? First place I'm going to be covering a lot of different applications is submandibular lymphatics. The lymphatic system is what reduces the inflammation. So you apply it beneath the chin, so it's just off beneath the first molars. So this is an example of the light going on to the blood vessels. This is a venule, an arterial, and a lymphatic vessel. You can see when the light shines, you increase the diameter. So it can take more products 
to the um, wound area where you've illuminated or taking them away as well. So if you've done an extraction, you want to apply it in direct contact. So you, the patient's frozen, you put it right down into the socket. So I'm using the interval tip, but you'll notice I've got a wrap around it, so it's covered. So you get faster healing and less pain. If you just had this one application, that would be enough to pay for the laser all by itself. It's that dramatic an effect. Patient has a dry socket. Um, you're using a very high dose to reduce the pain. So what I tell the patients is, you let me know when you start to see same change in your pain. So what I do, that's when I stop applying the laser dosage. Uh, then I send the patient home with the dressing. At that point, they're pain free. The next day, I bring them back. The dry socket, the blood clots fall out, the bare bone was exposed. So now I want to get the epithelium to cover that bone. So I change the dressing. I apply the laser for four joules to stimulate the fibroblasts. It usually takes about two applications, and things are covered, the patient's pain free. It goes on for normal healing. Uh, after root canal, any dental procedures, I'm applying it to the apex. And again, what dose do I use? I use bioinhibition dose. If I'm applying it, this is where I apply it. On the anterior, I'm going to apply it from the buccal surface. By cuspids, I often have two roots, so I'm buccal and lingual. On the upper molars, I'm applying it to all three roots. Lower molars, if I can, if the tongue isn't too big and the patient isn't a bad gagger, I would apply it to the lingual surface because the bone's much thinner. On the buccal, you've got that large um, external oblique bridge, so it's harder to get that light down to the apex. Again, hypersensitivity, it works very effectively for doing that. Um, I apply it first at the CJ, then at the apex, use something like Crystal or Gluma as a wetting agent, desensitizing agent. Then when I'm finished, I'll often apply uh, something like XTR, a two-part bond seems to work best. Alternatively, if it's multiple teeth, we can use the wand, which is the larger unit, which covers multiple teeth. At that point, I've covered both the apex and the CEJ at the same time. This is an example of me using it in the mouth. Um, restorative procedures, you can use it in a lot of smaller fillings. Uh, you apply it at the apex and then at the either at St. Occlusal, I'd apply it on the occlusal surface of the tooth. It's interproximal, I'd apply it in that interproximal area. It's not a panacea, you're not doing all your fillings, it's analgesia. I do about 30 to 40 percent of my fillings with this. If I'm using nitrous, I can even do a higher percentage of my fillings with it. Um, on the primary teeth, you apply it buccal and lingual again for doing this, for trying to inhibit the pain. So it's the C fibers that we're dealing with, always inhibition, because we're trying to inhibit that pain. So it's the C fibers. Either you can do it like this with the one tip of a single tooth or the larger tip of its multiple. Again, if it's the larger tip, you're doing both CEJ and apex at the same time. So this is basically what it does is that as the nerve impulse carried down through the mitochondria, it's putting a block and blocking some of those. So it's less of it get there, so it's, it's slowing down the depolarization. So these are just some of the fibers. These are the C fibers, A delta. These are the sensory nerve fibers. It affects them, but it doesn't affect the motor nerve fibers, which are the larger fibers, a much thicker uh, myelin sheath. So the patient's not going to feel like they're frozen. It's just going to, the patient will say, are you sure you want to do this? Because I don't think I'm frozen. But again, it's not, and I stress that it's not freezing, it's analgesia. It's pain. It's just reducing the pain. Uh, nausea and gagging. This is P6. This is the act, this is the point that's used for gagging. It's very effective. Uh, it's two finger widths above the second crease of the wrist. It's bioinhibition dose because you want to inhibit the gagging. Uh, where else do you see this? People that have C-sec bracelets, this is where they apply them. If you've done an implant, as I said in my talk, my introductory of dosage, if you apply the implant, I drill the site, I put eight joules into that site, the inhibition dose, send them home, then after I've brought them back, twice a week, for two weeks I bring them back, four joules buck and lingual will stimulate the bone formation. So let's just be the setting I've got. You can see it tells you what to do. Um, one of the things is with either of the tips, it's going to give you four joules, it's going to take 20 seconds, it doesn't matter which of the two tips you've used, 
the factory has preset the, the amount of energy coming out so that either tip, because it's joules per centimeter squared, one centimeter by four centimeter tip is going to need a lot more energy than a three millimeter tip. But it's, in this case, because it's preset, both of them are going to take you 20 seconds. The inhibition is going to take you 40 seconds and deliver four joules per centimeter squared. Soft tissue lesions, um, aphthous ulcers, herpes, uh, herpes lesions, mucositis for cancer, post uh, chemo pen cancer patients, very effective. Your close contact, something like a cold sore, you want to make sure you've got a cover on it so you don't get the virus contaminating the unit. Um, it'll also, if it's you catch it early enough, you can actually prevent it. The other thing, you always want to treat the lymphatics first. With lymphatics, it's always stimulation dose. No matter what you're doing, you're using that four joules biostimulation. It'd be very effective in treating mucositis for cancer patients. After a long appointment, the patients get the muscle trismus. You can apply it to the masseter. You go along the zygomatic arch uh, to get in the angle of jaw to get the origin insertion, and then one or two places in the middle of the muscle. And you do it bilaterally so the patient doesn't get that trismus afterwards. It can be used for nerve regeneration. When you're doing the nerve regeneration, you want to apply it either side of the nerve injury because in the nerve injury, you've got scar tissue. What you're trying to do is get the ax, the um, nerve growth, the axons to grow through that area of the wound and reattach. So you want to stimulate the two sides of the nerve. Like for stimulation, stimulation dose, four joules is what you want. It can also be treated for Bell's palsy. It was just a case of a dentist in Brazil that treated Bell's palsy. I treated this as well. Orthodontics, uh, your teeth can move faster with less pain. The study shown very dramatic um, for the patients that the controls on the right, lasers on the left. Basically, three percent of the patient had mild or no pain in the uh, laser group. And the non-laser group, the control group, 3% had moderate to intolerable pain. So it's a tremendous difference. You apply it at the center of rotation. It also can be used when separators are applied. Uh, if I've done laser procedures, I've done laser surgery. After I've finished, I use the stimulation dose to get faster soft tissue healing. Uh, Paradontal abscess, example like that. Uh, you're going to treat the lymph nodes. Then you're going to use your blue light. A curing light can kill bacteria. So I'm doing 55 joule, 55 seconds with the blue LED curing light. Sinusitis, very effective. Just treat the sinuses and also treat the lymphatic system. Uh, TMJ, very effective for that. For TMJ patients, first place I treat the LI4 bilaterally. That's between the thumb and first finger using inhibition dose. I treat the lymphatic system next. Again, I, for the lymphatics, it's always the stimulation dose. Then we're going to treat the different muscle areas. Treat the TMJ itself. We're treating the styloid. This is where the joint capsule is. You'll find this is very sensitive in a lot of your patients. We're treating the master along the, much like we did, we treated after the long dental appointment. Temporalis along the muscle, wherever you find that it's sore. Um, how do I make money? There's often, in my case, there's a number of codes in Ontario that I can use. And you're, you're wherever you are, there's probably codes if you're using fee guides that will show. This is just an example of some of the ones here. Also, indirectly, you have fewer post-op problems. If the patient's not coming back with post-op sensitivity, which you're probably seeing them for free, that's generating revenue for you. Also, if patients are happier, if you're not using drugs, they're out of pain, they're going to refer more patients to your practice. So it's a practice builder as well. Some of the organizations doing, Walt is a NALT or the two large groups doing low-level lasers. Um, the ASLMS, their next meeting is going to be in Orlando this 2015, April 23rd to 26th. The Academy of Laser Dentistry meets every year. Uh, you can go to their website to find it. Their next meeting is going to be February 5th to 8th in Palm Springs. But if, it's, if you're looking at this after that date, uh, just go to the website and you'll see the next year's meeting. They do a lot in low level laser as well. Some of the places to learn more um, from either the laser and you or the Thor website, you can either one of those, Thor downloads all the articles published every month. You go to different months of the website and find as much literature as you want. 
um, photomedicine laser surgery, either a Walt or Nolt membership. Uh, that includes the journal. And if you're an ASLMS um, member, that will include their journal. The um, photomedicine does the most articles. If you're in Europe, um, photo, laser and medical science is another journal that covers a lot of low-level low laser articles. Uh, a book is the New Laser Hand Therapy Handbook by Tuner and Hogue. If you just go Google Prima Books, you'll be able to find it. It's considered the Bible of low-level lasers. In hygiene, very effective. Um, if the patient's got irritation or gums, they maybe the hygienist is scale, there's a lot of bleeding. You apply four joules to stimulate the healing. Or if it's really sensitive, really sensitive, you do eight joules to give you analgesia so you don't have to go in often and freeze those teeth. The patient should be scaled but they're having pain. So the analgesia, either one of those, I'm using the, the larger tip. That's the extra oral tip. As we'll show in just a minute, you can just got a cover that goes onto it. So in that case, like an example for a hygienist, they can do a, an arch uh, very quickly, like in a matter of four applica six applications of 40 seconds. So four minutes, they can desensitize a whole mouth, either with that one or with this. So by doing that, you get three applications, left, right, and center. You desensitize that full arch. Um, this is my email address. If anybody has any questions, um, any case you'd like to ask me about, feel free and contact me and I'll answer your questions any day. I check this probably four or five times almost every day. This is the laser itself. This is the enteral tip. This was your surgical tip. Just take off the surgical tip. Again, as you saw in the videos, when you're using it in the mouth, make sure you cover it. This is the wand, the other tip. It comes with, if you're using an extraoral, you don't need to worry about it. But if you're using an intraoral especially, it's got a plastic sleeve that can go on it. Very simple to apply. It just goes on like that. You have covered it at the end of that appointment. Just throw it away. If we're going to use the unit, we'll turn it on. It'll come up. We're going to enter the code. In our case, it's just 0000. Press done. We're going to get the, it'll say treatment menu. Press treatment menu. It'll give us our different menus that we're using for surgical settings. Both, we'll go across. We'll get, I think, what the fifth screen. It'll say LLLT. We press that. It'll bring up another screen, LLLT. We'll press that. And now we get four settings. We got biostimulation wand. This is the wand. Bioinhibition with the wand. Biostimulation with the handpiece. Bioinhibition with the handpiece. So example, we'll go biostimulation with the wand. It's going to come up, press done. And now we've got it. It's going to say four joules per centimeter squared with 20 seconds. Anytime we're doing biostimulation, it's still going to be that four joules. So we're going to, it's ready to go. We're going to press standby. And now it's ready. We'll press the foot control. You can see that there's a red light on it. And it's counting down. As it counts down, it'll go down to zero and it'll just reset itself. It'll go back to standby. Okay, at that point, I'm still pressing the foot can pedal, and you can see actually nothing's happening. So you can't accidentally apply too long. You also can do the settings. These are all factory presets. So if we're finished with that, we'll go back to the menu. That was biostimulation. We go bioinhibition. Same thing. Now it's going to give 8 joules for 40 seconds. If we went biostimulation with the handpiece. Again, you can see it's exactly the same 20 seconds. So it, it basically is foolproof. Uh, learn more and come, and it's really going to be a tremendous boon to your practice. Thank you.